how to do a quit claim deed in California. Welcome back. I'm Ted Thomas. I've been involved in real estate since 1970, but the last 30 years, I've been involved in mostly tax liens and tax defaulted property. Now, in this episode, I'm going to cover how to do a quit claim deed in California. Now, I formerly lived in California, and they have some great deals in California for investors, which I'm going to show you some step-by-step -step process. Also, the rules are unusual and different from other states. I'll share those during this video. I'll also cover how to get started with tax lien certificates, how to make the big money with tax defaulted or tax deeds. But before I finish this video, at the very end, I'm going to cover two big mistakes. You don't want to miss that because these two big mistakes happen at the auction and you want to miss, avoid these mistakes. So I'll cover those in just a minute. I'll be right back. California will allow the property owner as much as five years to be in default before the treasurer will take action and start the confiscation and seizure process. Now, that's a long time, and so the taxes really begin to add up. Now, many of the properties that I've seen at auction went as much as seven years before they put them into default. So as I say, the rules are different, so you'll have to look at the rules differently, and you'll have to act a little bit differently. Now, California is considered a deed state. That means they're going to sell the property at auction, and they will delete the mortgage when they do that. All 58 counties follow that rule. Now, as I say, it's a big state. It's got a lot of properties that they're going to sell, and most of the auctions are done at least once a year. Now, some of the big counties like Kern County, San Bernardino County, they might have two or three auctions a year. Now, the treasurer has the power to make all the decisions. So the treasurer can decide if they want to change the price of a property. The treasurer can decide if they want to sell the property. Anything that happens at an auction is controlled by the treasurer of the county. For example, a recent auction, a student attended the auction. There was 3,100 properties to sell. They couldn't sell all the property. They did sell about 1,500. So that meant they had quite a list left over, maybe 16 or 1,700 properties. They had not sold. The treasurer decided on site that they would now sell properties for $100, starting bid $100 at the next auction. Problem was, the treasurer didn't notify everybody, only told the people in the room about the auction. So the treasurer can do it. Whatever they want, they can change the rules. The rules are always in the statute book, and the rules are always in the auction. When they give the auction the rules, they will tell you about it. But you can expect the treasurer to make any change that they want to make. All right, we're talking today about quit claim deed. Now, what is a quit claim deed? Well, first of all, properties are usually changed hands with a property, with a property deed. Now, in California, they might call that a grant deed. They might call it a warranty deed, okay? When you're buying a property at auction, you're probably gonna get a sheriff's deed, or you'll get a treasurer's deed, or you'll get a quit claim deed. Now, those deeds are a little different. I said California is different. But quit claim deed, you can find one in every single county in the state of California. You could actually buy one in a stationery store. You could get one from an attorney. You could get one online. A quit claim deed simply means who's ever quit claiming the property, the grantor can quit claim any responsibility. All right, so let me say the words in different words. The words are they could disclaim any responsibility for the property or for the title. So most properties that you'll get at an auction, you'll get with a quit claim deed. If it comes with a treasurer's deed or it comes with a sheriff's deed, more than likely they will still quit claim any responsibilities for the property itself or for the title. So what does that mean to you? Well, it means a lot to you. You now have all responsibility to clear the title and any responsibility for difficulties with the property. So you have purchased a property at auction. Hopefully you got a great deal, but now you do have the responsibility if you want to sell it. If you want to sell, you're going to have to clear any title issues that are there. How will you do that? Well, that's going to be a process. You'll need an attorney, and that's going to involve a quiet title action. Not to be covered on this video, but I'll cover it on another video that you can see it later. All right, so let's go back and do a little review. This 
particular session is all about quit claim deed in California. You can get a quit claim at a local title company. You can get it at an escrow company. You can get one from an attorney. What you're doing with a quit claim deed is you're claiming, you're disclaiming any responsibility in that property. That means you're disclaiming any responsibility for the title, any responsibility for the actual structure of the property. So a quit claim deed is a disclaiming deed, okay? Now, if you go to Wikipedia, they will tell you a grantor, that could be the county, is granting you the property, but they're giving you a quit claim deed. All right, you're the grantee when you accept it. All right, quit claim disclaims all responsibility. Keep that in the back of your mind. So when you buy that, expect to get a quit claim deed and also expect to do a quiet title action unless the county is giving you clear title. Okay, I could talk about contract for deed and that really is an installment sale. You sell the properties with a contract for deed. So it's altogether different than what I've just talked about. All right, so I'm gonna do a couple of questions before I finish this session. All right, uh, the question is, what is the GIS system? Well, all of you are familiar with the Google mapping system and you're familiar with Google driving cars around and give you pictures, all right? Well, there's other satellite systems. Not every county subscribes to it, but most of them do. Most of the counties, especially in California, will have a GIS. It's geographical information system. Now, this is a system that the county pays for, all right? Now, it's basically a satellite that's rotating around the world. Now, the satellite takes different pictures at different elevations. So some pictures might show street maps, other pictures might show elevations. So there'd be numerous levels of, of pictures that are within the GIS mapping system. You need a class on that, we conduct that in our, our regular trainings, but you can learn the GIS mapping system by first just going to the county and experimenting with it. But it, Visualize a satellite that's at 30,000 feet that you can bring down to 1,000. You can take it up to 2,000. You can get a lot of views of what's going on in the neighborhood. Okay, how are you gonna sell properties? The question is, uh, do you use signs? Uh, there's all kinds of signs you can use on property. Some are legal, some are illegal. You need to learn about signs because they'll draw a lot of people to the property. Now, if the county or the city has ordinances, they will come and pick up your signs. So think about what signs you're gonna use or if you're gonna do what the realtor people do, they put the sign up, then they take it back in on Sunday night. So you need to think about signs. Uh, you need to go through a class to learn all the different ones to use. Okay, so let's talk about those two big mistakes. Number one, people show up at the auction and they right away start bidding. They're really excited, so they wanna get going. You don't wanna bid at an auction if you haven't seen the property. Why? What if there was a hurricane? What if there was a big storm and there was a flood? What if there was a fire? Something might have happened to that property since you last looked at it. So if you've not looked at it, don't bid at all. If you have looked at it, it has to be recent, very close to the auction time. So looking at a property, a lot of people don't do it and then they get in big trouble and they lose a lot of money because the property isn't any good when they get there. So that's number one. Number two, you don't want to bid in an auction unless you have an exit strategy. So if you don't know what you're gonna sell the property for, how can you plan on bidding? You could easily bid too high. So what you wanna do is you wanna plan your purchases. So you need to know exactly what the property's worth, what you can sell it for, and what you can sell it for quickly before you start bidding at auction. That's called an exit strategy. All right, folks, if you learned a lot in these lessons, we have a lot more for you, and all you have to do is join my community. Now, I have a gift for you if you do join the community, and all you have to do is go below me, but the gift is a quick start. Now, what does quick start mean? It's just a short course that's online that you can start right away learning about tax liens and deeds. The first part of the quick start is about tax lien certificate. The second part of it is all about tax deeds. You can learn both of those, and you can do that. Just go below me. It's a free course. It's my gift to you.